other thing as well that makes this even more of a weird situation is that supposedly I've read articles recently that COVID passes now, in order to have a COVID pass that's actually valid, you're gonna might you might need to have a booster. So later on down the line they might say the actual way to kind of prove you're fully covered is to have a booster. Unless you have one, you're not gonna be fully covered, which is annoying because they already told you double jab will be enough and now suddenly they change the rules again. So you're led to believe that every time a new variant comes out, we're gonna to have to get another booster and that's going to then void whatever pass we had previously. It's just a complete horror show of a situation. It really, really is. And then um I stumbled across this article from ITV talking to a couple of nightclub owners in terms of how unfairly targeted they feel regarding the whole COVID passes and what's going on and how it's negatively affecting them because obviously it's going to discourage people from coming to the bars and pubs because they feel it's going to be unsafe, which again leads them to not be able to make money. They're not taking money for the till, which of course makes them have to shut and everyone gets impacted, right? Bartenders, bar backs, cloakroom people, people that work in the toilets, the artists, everyone gets impacted, security guards, blah, 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 blah. So anyway, the article says as follows from ITV. It says nightclub owners in South Yorkshire say they feel they're being unfairly treated, sorry, targeted as part of measures coming into force to curb the spread of Omicron variant. From tomorrow, Wednesday, the 15th of December, anyone going to a nightclub will have to show that they are double jabbed or provide a negative lateral test. Paul Kinsey, owner of the Viper Rooms in Sheffield, in Sheffield, they always have these kind of weird rooms in it in Northern England, don't they? Why do they call their clubs this sort of stuff? The Viper Rooms, I love that. Um, he racked up a million pounds of debt when his chain of pubs was closed in March last year and had to lay off more than 200 staff he expects the new rules to hit his bottom line again he says you will have a number of people who believe well if this is what the government's putting in there it must be a good reason why it's being put in there and there'll also be people who aren't being vaccinated who will say well actually we'll just stay away then and then we'll get to the 85% of the venues and city centre that you're allowed to go to without showing any proof definitely and agree with that one um, my personal view is that Boris Johnson has lost all credibility and in, I think that what happens now is the cherry picks the elements of the science to support the political decisions you know we've been the whipping boy for the last two years in the whole COVID campaign and I don't think the public have the respect to believe that they are saying it's actual solution of course not nightlife venues or bars and hospitality venues were the first to close during COVID because supposedly those were the places where COVID spread the most when all the evidence that got presented to us said the com complete contrary because if you think about it most of these places especially if they serve food would have pretty decent ventilation systems anyway would probably have good hygiene systems in the first part so hygiene protocols so all the things I put into place would already make them a great spot to basically be able to maneuver and to kind of work within this kind of changing landscape but instead they just do the kind of easy thing which is the low and gets through take the place where everyone feels nervous about because it's the most people that all compact into them and say that's not safe but then you can go to a supermarket and buy whatever you want and spend whatever you want however long you want in there just as long as when you get to the tails you stand two minutes away from your, the first closest person next to you it's a bullshit it's a nonsense but again they don't know what to do and again at the at the beginning i have more patience for it I have more patience for it in the beginning because we were all scared. We didn't have any information. We saw all those terrifying videos coming out from places in China, early parts of Italy, people being carried out in body bags and stuff, you know, not enough room in the morgues and stuff to cremate people like crazy videos we were seeing all over the country, all over the world. Sorry. So I'm not surprised people were really panicking and not really sure what to do and kind of just, you know, everything looked like a nail at that point. I understand hammering away. But now we have the experience. Now we have the information. Now we have the data. Now we have the loaves and bits it's a piece of anecdotal evidence we have the research the scientific so whatever it may be all these alternative medicines in place surely has to be a better way of dealing with this than what they're doing now surely but it's not instead just more control more authority more telling you what to do where to stand high high to jump it's just a it's just an absolute nonsense it really really is and continues here says hospitality industry has been impacted by workers staying at home and tomorrow's new rules come in just as they're entering their busiest time of the year imagine true this is probably when you make the most tips like it just must be horrible in a time to be in especially if you just got back into the industry right and with the understanding that you're going to have maybe a good christmas for once in the last two years and then suddenly again they pull the rug on you from your feet it continues here says um nick somonet um from unite said that it's been a particularly challenging with the distinct sorry with the distinct lack of income he said the promise of all is going to come good at christmas don't worry, we'll reap the rewards of the, of the good, solid, safe Christmas and we'll be happy to pay our bills in January. That's looking less likely now. The new rules will apply for nightclubs or any venue that from 1am to 5am serve alcohol during those times and provide music and have a space for dancing. It will also apply for indoor seated venues with more than 500 people. Again, weird rule. Unseated indoor venues for 
with more than 4,000 people and any event with more than 10,000 people. The government said the measures being brought in um, were balanced and in a proportion. Of course, they'll say that Deputy Prime Minister Dominic Rabb said that um, we've had to introduce some target measures to stop the stem of the flow and the spread of this Omicron variant. Same old bullshit. Again, the, the virus is meant to be it's meant to be mild. The symptoms are meant to be mild. The it's not as it's not as brutal as some of the other variants that came about. But again, it doesn't matter. New variant, everyone panics, everyone scares, and then the government take this opportunity to kind of you know um, vice grip us again in some some weird overreaches and governmental controls. It's just bullshit, really. It really, really is. Man. I'm just tired of it. I'm just over it. And they just beat us into. The only thing I can think of as a positive from this is that I think slowly but surely we've all kind of waking up to the fact that these guys don't know what they're doing. There's obviously some weird kind of overarching control thing that they just don't want to let go of. Most governments, most politicians, because especially they've kind of seen themselves in limelight. Sort of like the what's going on with the other guy? What's his name? Um, Dr. Fauci in America, right? He can't, you know, there's not a camera that he sees where he, he's not going to turn down. Every opportunity to talk to somebody, to get his voice heard from in front of people, he will take it. He was somebody no one cared about for a long period of time and then suddenly everyone cares about him and is resting, and basically hanging on his every word. So I'm not surprised people like that, especially of that age, are feeling like, you know, a little bit special in the limelight. I get it. But then when it comes to the politicians and stuff who are basically don't want to let go of us and don't want to let us kind of go back to living our normal lives without their inc without their flipping control, without their intrusion, it's just getting a little bit tired now. And again, like I said, the only thing that's good from this is that people are finally woken up to the fact that this is going on a bit too much. This is they've they've, they've kind of overstepped the mark. They're they're not letting go, of course. And clearly there's something else going on as to why we are still constantly in this kind of groundhog's day of like COVID. Yeah, it's never stopping, right? Every time somewhere, every time we're just about to get out of it, every time things are starting to look good and we've kind of gone going back to having our own autonomy in our lives, suddenly a mysterious variant pops up out of the place and then we have to go back into some level of restriction or lockdown. It's just, you know, it's too obvious now. So people have maybe woken up to the fact and obviously as well, there's a, a population of people in this country for whatever reason who think Tories can do no wrong. I think for them that's been a big wake up call. But again, for the other side too, for the ones that also think Labour can do no wrong, they've not been the best op opposition either, right? Um, Keir Starmer, despite all these kind of blufferings and boasting on on TV, every kind of restriction and every kind of measure they've put into place in terms of restrictions, he's kind of basically agreed with every single one, I think. I don't think there's one restriction so far that's been brought to the House of Commons that he's not endorsed or not kind of got behind. Out all under the guise of, oh, we're trying to stem the flow. There's the normal line they always kind of try out here, right? It's this line. Yeah, anyways, I think it's here. Um, the, 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 to stop the step, to stop the to stop stem the flow and spread of this new Omicron variant. It's like a this line they spread it. It's like fucking. I hear this fucking being sung all over the place to stop this and replace Omicron with everything else with some other variant come out next year and the next year and the next year and the next year. It's just like ay ay ay, leave me the fuck alone. But they won't. They just won't. They refuse to leave you alone. Um, you know, the COVID passports are probably going to have a really bad impact on nightclubs, I can imagine. Um, here's a uh, another article courtesy of the BBC speaking about it. it. Says the following nightclubs warn COVID passports will be have devastating effect, which I'm sure it will, um, which probably will lead to again more illegal parties, more underground parties, which again will then lead to more cases supposedly, more deaths supposedly. It's just like they always make a rod for their own back here. It says the Nighttime Industries Association said it had come at the worst possible time with the pre-Christmas period absolutely crucial for the sector. The rules often in the rules affect indoor venues holding more than 500 people and outdoor venues with a capacity of more than 4,000. People will need an NHS COVID pass or negative lateral flow test to enter. The new rules for nightclubs will come into force on the 15th of December. COVID passes will have to be implemented in um, will ha sorry, which have been implemented in Scotland, Wales, have caused a 30% and 26% drop off in trade risk effectively the NTI chief executive has said and that's what I've been saying from the beginning the clubs that are still around now the people that are still going to nightclubs now are definitely still in it for the love right because for the most part the general punter who just went just because they were bored on a Friday has either got new hobbies or just kind of got completely turned off from it and just stays at home and does something else right um, or just doesn't go out in general most of the people so the ones that are actually going are the ones that are there for the for the love so to then implement these changes into place, you're either going to cause people to stay at home, fake whatever pass they want to, you know, to get in, or 
you know whatever or just continue doing what they're doing previously but it's not going to make anybody kind of i don't feel like go out and get vaccinated at this point because at this point if you don't if you don't want to get vaccinated you've definitely got good reasons why you don't want to and uh, the carrot dangling of a nightclub being open for you doesn't really entice you that much because you've probably made some other sort of um you've probably got some other options that exist because i know a few of promoters i have in my inbox who basically been saying without saying that we're not going to implement no covid passport rule or electoral protest rule just come along to a party keep it hush hush and we'll let you in certain places are doing that already so i can imagine they already exist now at, the, at this moment in time so when i'm so shocked man it continues here it says um, the NTI chief executive Michael Kill said the following vaccine passports will have a des devastating effect also impact on a sector already so bruised by the pandemic the mixed public health messages this week have been coming out the government have arrived at the worst possible time the pre-Christmas period is absolutely crucial for the sector and now it's announced damaging vaccine passports are to be implemented far from saving Christmas the Prime Minister has given our sector the horrible present of, main, uh, of more pain to for businesses temporarily trying to recoup losses from the early pandemic now again don't get me wrong the, if i'm not mistaken the samarian variant wasn't discovered too recently but still man the, the kind of last minute.com implementation of this sort of stuff the lack of warning the lack of foresight the lack of head like everything is just like there's no lessons learned from the last year or so and it? it just feels like it feels like we're just kind of waking up and just deciding to react to this the same way we acted to do it before it's just like come on guys the government report in june um today found that vaccine passports could have effects um, including discouraging people from attending venues of course it concluded that the time the impact of bringing them in will be out of proportion to the public health and benefits yes but at this point if you don't have one you've probably got a good reason why you don't and no amount of this shitty hospitality nightlife dangling in your front of your face is going to change it because either you're going to decide to not go or you're just going to wait it out until things get better and then go again when the rewards get lax that's what most people are going to do because why not it's not as if life went back to complete normal before anyway it continues to say given a mr kill question the timing of the rationale of the government's move it is sound evidence and based public public sorry public policy making or is it an attempt to make the news agenda um on from a changing the story about a down the christmas party of course which makes complete sense and it's definitely worked the whole christmas party's malarkey everyone was getting worried about has definitely subsided and once again the people in the government who are responsible for it have been able to skirt away unpunished and us donuts regular civilians are the ones that are having to flip in change our plans do this do that flip around here bend over backwards just to make it work another one here NACAF operator Recom, which has more than 40 venues across the UK, said it was disappointed, but sadly not surprised by the government's move. Uh, Peter Marks, chairman of the U of its UK board, said that there was no evidence anywhere in the world that nightclubs had caused an increase in COVID cases. Definitely true. And it's also only unjust to single out late night vector, night night sector, but it will now have an impact on the transmission rates. Another person says Jeremy Joseph, who owns a London Lake Club GAY, which is one of my favourites in heaven, um, said that the clubs have been really busy when they first reopened after the previous re restrictions, but it has dropped in the last couple of weeks since the variants come out. Of course, and it dropped anyway in general. You definitely saw it. When their first restrictions got lifted, I've said it before, it definitely felt like the clubbing scene hadn't necessarily recovered or bounced back at all. The people who I saw out were the ones that were going to be out regardless and the ones that didn't want to go out or the ones who kind of dropped off because of the virus because of the lockdowns because of changing jobs because of changing responsibilities whatever it may be so i'm not surprised that was the case it says yeah he said his clubs had a chance to recover after re previous restrictions that were lifted but many sorry but any money they made was put aside it says here yeah, continues the whole way through this has been we've been walking on eggshells because um, we never know what is going to happen i feel like i'm constantly in survival mode he said the new restrictions don't make any sense i've got three venues and each of the and each is going to have different rules it makes no sense it's as if this government thinks that covid will go that venue has a capacity of 500 so i won't go in there <laughs> exactly if i go to gay bar and old compton street in london our capacity is 450 there are no restrictions so it's just carrying as normal mr joseph said this was against the vaccine passports and that he was glad people could show lateral flotis so at least this won't alienate people but you can't have one rule for one type of venue and a different rule for another and again that thing as well i also don't understand i'm not for the vaccine passports at all i only got mine because they gave me no option but i'm not for mandated vaccinations i don't want people going around having to show flipping papers to get into places i think that's completely unconstitutional and against everything we stand for as a quote-unquote free society but if you're going to enforce a rule 
just do it properly. So if you're going to say vaccine passports in order to get to venues, make that a blanket rule across all venues. Don't say then you can get in with the lateral flow test also because the lateral flow test, if you're being completely honest, can get faked, can get duped. I've never had a false positive. I've been able to take lateral flow test and not actually stick it all the way up my nose and still been able to get a negative. It's not necessarily the most accurate um, way of saying if you've got the virus or not. And again, like I said, they can get completely duped. So if you want to be sure that people that are entering this venue are making sure that they're not, you know, they're vaccinated the proper way, then the best way to do it is to have them have a COVID vaccine passport. That would be the actual way to do it because that would mean they're most likely had to have been double dose, whatever it may be. But this whole lateral flow test and the vaccine passport, so or a vaccine passport, it just doesn't make any sense either you do it properly or you don't do it at all but again no surprise from this government that we're in